And welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. It's Dr. Janita Pritchett here, and on this channel, we cover all things general chemistry related. On this video, we're going to be learning about the mole, the, the elusive mole that everybody in chemistry talks about, and how we're going to use it in calculations in the future. Let's get started. So, as we know, atoms are extremely small, and trying to count them by any ordinary means would be almost impossible. And so scientists and chemists alike had to come together to come up with a system to aid in this counting process, where they assign an arbitrary name or concept to represent a certain value or a number that we're counting. Now, this is nothing new to you or shouldn't be anything new to you. We do this all the time. So for instance, when I tell you you have a dozen of something, the word dozen means 12. You all have been programmed that every time you hear the word a dozen, that that means 12. Well, in chemistry, we're going to use that same mentality or same theory to help us in counting our atoms and other types of small particles. And so the word that we're going to use is the word mole, a mole of something. So every time you hear that you have a mole of something, if we are counting it, that means that we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of whatever we're talking about. That number is known as Avogadro's number, and you're going to want to memorize that one. And so for convenience purposes, we often round that at 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, rather than using the entire number represented for Avogadro's number. So it's important to remember, just like when we say we have a dozen of anything, where a dozen of cars or a dozen shoes or a dozen houses all means 12, anytime we say have a mole of something, that means that we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. Now, much like when we're counting a dozen, just because we have a dozen eggs or a dozen shoes, the 12, the number, the same, that does not mean that the mass amount for each of those substances is going to be the same. It's gonna vary based on the material that's present. Well, the same thing happens when we're looking at these atoms and the elements and relating the mass to them. Just because we have a mole of something, which means if I count it, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of that particular thing, the mass is going to vary. The mass is going to be based on the atomic mass of that substance that we're discussing. And that relationship between the mass and the mole is where we develop what's called the molar mass. So the mass of one mole of atoms of every element is called the molar mass. So one mole of something equal to its atomic mass represents the molar mass. So an element's molar mass in grams per mole is numerically equal to the element's atomic mass in, a, in the atomic mass units. So for instance, one, if we had one mole of aluminum, that means we would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms, so for counting. And if I weighed it, it would be equal to its mass of 26.98 grams of aluminum. Similarly, if I have one mole of carbon, well, one mole if I count it, so again, this side represents if I'm counting, Count-wise, I would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms, but the mass would vary. The mass would be 12.01 grams based off of the atomic mass units that we see on the periodic table. And last but not least, helium, one mole is equal to Avogadro's number, but the mass would equal only to its mass on the periodic table of 4.0031. Therefore, the molar mass of any element becomes a conversion factor that we can use um, to help us to go from grams to moles or moles to atoms um, as needed. So on this table here, you just see a number of different substances in their respective masses, the amount in, uh, if we're counting in one mole, and then the weight as well. And so you can see, if we look at this column here, when we're counting how many moles, or excuse me, how many atoms are found in that one mole, that number is consistent. It's Avogadro's number. Whereas that, that weight or the molar mass that we're ultimately going to be using in conversion factors is going to be based off of the atomic mass units associated with that atom. And so we can see here just a couple of pictures of one mole of carbon versus one mole of sulfur. But notice, again, that the masses change. Now, something I'd like to introduce to my students is this idea of visual aid known as Mole Island. Uh, Mole Island is just a great way to help you think about the relationships that exist and the calculations that can be done along the way. So for Mole Island, and we're going to expand upon this through different chapters, but for right now, you're going to start by just simply in the center, you make an island and you write the word mole. And the reason we put that in the center is because the mole represents the linking unit that's going to allow me to go from one unit to the other. On the far right side, you're going to put 
another little island and write grams. And for right now, over here, we're gonna do one more island that says atoms. As we continue to move, we're going to add more and more to Mole Island, but this is going to be a great learning tool for you all. Now, in order for us to convert from grams to moles, as we just saw on the previous slide, we need to use molar mass. And so the conversion that we're going to be using is that the grams of a substance is equal to one mole of the substance, where the gram amount is coming from the periodic table. And this is going to be known as our molar mass. And on the far side to the left, if we're going from atoms to moles or moles to atoms, again, we're counting how many are there, we now are going to be using Avogadro's number. Okay, and so Avogadro's number is equal to one mole of whatever we're talking about. Remember, Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever we're talking about. Now, what you should also see by how this is drawn out is that notice I didn't do a direct linker between grams and atoms. I didn't draw that there. And that's intentional. That's to help you remember that I can't go from grams to atoms or atoms to grams in one step. I have to first convert to moles and then get to whatever desired unit after the fact. You're gonna hear me say this a lot throughout my videos, but if you're not in moles first in some of these problems, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you convert to moles first as that's gonna be your linking unit to everything that we need, okay? So take a picture of this, make sure when you're taking a test, draw this out. I've seen so many students use this in their, um, on their exams and they found it to be a lifesaver. So let's take a look at how we would apply Mole Island in a problem. Again, in the corner here, I'm just going to go really quickly, just draw my Mole Island one more time as a learner, learning tool. Grams over here, atoms over here. And again, this is just to help me remember what steps are possible. And we're also going to be using that given and find method we, we talked about in chapter one to help us with the unit conversion. So here it says, how many moles of carbon are contained in 0 0.0265 grams of carbon block? So in this case, we're asked to go from moles of carbon, sorry, solve how many moles of carbon are there starting from the number of grams. And so if we look at Mole Island, we can see that indeed, we should be able to do this in one step. So if we start with our beginning number, 0 0.0265 grams of carbon, Make sure you write both port parts, the grams and the element that you're talking about. As we get into more complex um, things in the next coming chapters, you're gonna see where that's gonna become really, really valuable. And what we want to solve for is the number of moles of carbon. And so when we think about mole island, I know I should be able to go from the grams to moles by looking at the relationship to one mole and the mass of carbon. So much like in previous chapters, we're gonna put the units in first. On the bottom, I'm going to put grams of carbon because I want to cancel that out. On the top, I'm going to put moles of carbon. And now here's where we're going to translate that molar mass idea right into this conversion factor. We would say that one mole of carbon is equal to 12.01 grams of carbon based off what's found on the periodic table. Always make sure you take that atomic mass at least two places past the decimal point while you're placing it in. When we plug it in our calculators, we would take 0 0.0265 divided by 12.01 to solve for our value. And we end up with 2.21 times 10 to the negative third moles of carbon, which would be present. Okay, let's try some more problems. You see it says on the board because these are the slides that I do use with my class. Again, I'm going to quickly draw my mole island just as a visual reminder of what I can and cannot do. And I do advise you all, if you're taking a test in person or online, you just have this image here to help you remember what steps are allowable. So here it says, calculate the number of moles of copper in 2.34 grams of copper. Again, I'm going from moles to grams. I can see I can do that in a single step. So if we start with 2.34 grams of copper, we want to get to moles of copper. And now on the bottom, I'm going to put grams of Cu. The top will be moles of Cu. The relationship between grams and moles is the molar mass. So that tells me that one mole is equal to the mass of copper, which is 63.55 from the periodic table. 
plug that in your calculators and we end up with 2.34 divided by 63.55 and we get 0 0.0368 moles of copper. Now you'll notice there's a second part or second question also asked there and it says calculate the number of copper atoms. Now in this case, would it make sense for us to go back to the get beginning to the 2.34 to figure out how many atoms we have? And the answer should be no, because we see if we look at Mole Island that if I want to solve for the number of atoms of something, I first need to go from grams to moles, then moles to atoms. So I could simply start from this endpoint here and continue the process on in order to solve for the atoms. So now that I've converted to the number of moles, I now want to get to atoms of copper. So that would come on the top. On the bottom, we will put moles of copper on the bottom, and we're going to fill that conversion factor in using Avogadro's number. Remembering that one mole, anytime I say one mole, when I'm counting how many of something is there, we put Avogadro's number of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd on top. Now, when you plug this in your calculator, you're going to take that 0 0.0368 and multiply by 6.022 e to the 23 to get your final answer of 2.22 times 10 to the 22nd atoms that would be present. Let's look at the next problem. Calculate the number of grams of fluorine there are in 1.232 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of fluorine. And so again, we're going to grams. I'm starting in atoms. I can look at Mole Island and see that this will likely take two steps. I cannot go directly from atoms to grams. So we start from the beginning here, and then again, making sure we write our units. And then we wanna first get rid of the atoms of fluorine. And so I put those on the bottom. Initially go to moles first because that's the linking unit. So moles of fluorine goes on top. And our second conversion factor, moles of fluorine would go on the bottom. And on the top, we would put grams of fluorine because that's ultimately what we want to solve for. Again, you should recognize we cannot go from atoms to grams in a singular step. We must first go from atoms to moles and then moles to grams accordingly. I always encourage students to put the units down first because that'll help you uh, understand where the number should go um, once the units are in their appropriate places. And so for the first conversion factor, I need to go from one mole of fluorine and Avogadro's number, so 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd would be here. And then for our, our molar mass, we would say that 19.0 grams of fluorine is equal to one mole. Now when we plug this in our calculator, we take 1.232 e to the 23 times 19, then we divide it by 6.022 e to the 23 in order to get a final answer of 3.887 grams of fluorine. Remember, your significant figure count comes up from the given, the starting information, as the conversion factors represent exact quantities and therefore have infinite number of sig figs. On this next problem, it says calculate the moles of sulfur in 57.8 grams of sulfur. So I'm not going to redraw a mole island because you guys should have it down now. But we should be able to say that this should be able to be done in one step. Start from the beginning, 57.8 grams of sulfur. On the bottom, we will put grams of sulfur because that's what I want to cancel that out. Above, we will put moles of sulfur because that's where we ultimately want to get to. We know off of Mole Island, we're going to use the molar mass. So we would, say, we would say that the molar mass of sulfur is equal to its mass of 32.06 grams on the bottom compared to one mole of sulfur. And then so when we plug this in our calculator, we have 57 divided by 32.06. This in our calculator, we end up with 1.78 moles of sulfur, and that would represent our final answer. We have one more problem that we're gonna tackle here. So this one says, how many copper atoms are found in a penny weighing, weighing 3.1 grams? 
And so we know we're starting in grams, 3.10 grams. And we want to figure out and we want to figure out how many atoms there are. So from grams to atoms, I know that should require two steps. So I would start by saying I want to get rid of the number of grams there. So on the bottom, I would write grams of copper. On the, on the top, I would write moles of copper. Remember, if you're not in moles, get two moles first. If you're not in moles, get two moles first, as that's the linking unit to everything. So then after we're in moles, we would then go from moles of copper on the bottom, and then atoms of copper on the top. To fill each of these in, we would use the molar mass and Avogadro's number respectively. So we would say that there is one mole of copper for every 63.55 grams. And then we would also say in one mole, if I'm counting the number of atoms, there would be Avogadro's number. So when we plug that in, we end up with 3.10 3 times 6.022 e to the 23 divided by 63.55. And we plug that in, we end up with a final answer of 2.94 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of copper. I hope this video helped you understand everything about the mole and how to use it in calculations. Stay tuned for more videos uh, in the upcoming chapters. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment for more material that you'd like to see. Have a great day and talk to you guys later. Bye.